bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. All right, like five minutes from Duggan Falls is uh, a fish hatchery. And if you watch, it's kind of funny, they, they try to spawn up the little uh, water spout there. So these are little salmon that they're uh, raising here. And so what they're doing over in these uh, trailers, I've been in these before, so what they do is they take little fish out of each pond as they go into the trailer, they go through this anesthetizing tray, which is just a little chemical that's in the water, and it, and it knocks them out for just a little bit. And so what they're doing inside the trailer is they're clipping their back fin. And that's how up here in Washington State, they probably do it everywhere, but that's how we determine what is a hatchery fish and what is a natural fish, uh, a native fish. And uh, if it still runs the same way, you're not allowed to keep a native fish you can keep the, hat, the hatchery fish. And these are all over Washington State. Unfortunately, it's kind of necessary to do this anymore because fishing regulations and we've overfished them. So these are just little babies and that's what they're doing in the, uh, the trays over there, or in the trailers. There's some, uh, usually over in that corner, you can see them, you see the albinos. Uh-huh. They like to hang out together, right over there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go see the albinos. I don't know if you guys can see the white ones, lakes, but they say that they'll be the first to go. Um, the birds will get them. And they said that they like to hang out together. All right, so we're actually going to get an opportunity to go into this first trailer and then the second trailer. Now, if you notice, this first trailer looks brand new. And that other one's old school. So I don't know if it's a difference inside or not, but let's go check it out. So this this is where they come in. And this is this is supposed to the tray that nestetize them, right? Yeah. They this well go now. in this basket. Oh. It has a, a derivative of novocaine in it. And this also sedates them. <laughs> Now, and what kind of salmon are these? Then? Coho. They're coho. And you can see she grabs it and then gets that little fin right off. Yep. My eyesight wouldn't be good enough to be able to even see that. <laughs> A lot of people wear readers. <laughs> yeah. And so then they go back into this this tray here. What they they, they go, slowly make their way back yeah, out. They go through yeah, the camera. Little drops right there. Yeah, right there and they go, get dumped into the pond down below. Oh. Okay, so here's what happens. It gets clipped. It goes down the counter. The light blinks. Oh, and that's a counter. That's yeah, a counter. that's a counter. It counts every time we drop a fish in. Every time. And so in an eight-hour period, how many would it? one person clip then oh well it varies some people are slower so <laughs> some people do and so five, six, six, five, six. my son over there sometimes does eight thousand a day wow and you're paid a dollar per fish right yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is Carrie, right? It's Kelly. Kelly. Okay. Kelly, say hello. Hello. <laughs> she was so nice and uh, told us we could come on over here. So, thank you, guys. Okay. Wonderful. And what was your name? Kathy. Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Uh, I'm Lily in the trailer. Okay. These porthole doors, what I call porthole doors. Okay. They load the fish from the pond in the morning. Okay. These they, big ones right here? Yeah. Okay. These ones out here. And as you can see, the tanks are filled with fish right now. Okay. So the netters tip would have been the sedation over here. Oh, this is the tank that feeds the station. Oh, right here. 
right? There's a match. And, and they come back really quick as soon as it's in the, the regular yeah, yeah. one. But when will they release these? Are they going to release these right in the river right here? I believe so. Okay. And then when do they usually do that? I'm not sure about Does anybody know? Yeah. We take them from one pond. They put them in another one. We have a target today. Of, uh, Fifty-two thousand seven hundred and ninety-four in this trailer. They come that, up with a target number. Yeah. Because <laughs> they need to know how hard. many fish are in the pond that they're, they're going to, so they can feed them correctly. Oh, I see. Okay, so that trailer over there is doing the same thing we are. And this is the newer trailer. This is the newer. So you guys have air conditioning and everything? Oh, no. no. <laughs> we have windows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Anyway, they load the fish in the morning. And this machine counts every fish we Oh, wow, that's so cool. I can set the target in here. The target that we have this morning is set in here. When we hit that target, the blue light on everybody's counter will flash at us. Oh, because so they want you to stop, stop at that number two. Okay. Yeah. So it does an individual count on each person and then a total count. Wow. That's which I track. And you guys so. have been here since April 4th? I, April the 15th. No, yeah. don't start in April 4th. Yeah. Wow. So we did the Chinook down below. Do most of all you live local right around here? Well, some of us come from Vancouver. I wasn't sure if you traveled yeah. where wherever the trailer goes, you go, you know. Uh, no, it stays here. Okay. Both yeah. the trailers stay here. And so they, they only do this once a year, or they're different fish are constantly. Raising. Yeah, they're raising. We have a birthday party. Oh, very. very well. They uh, well, they so very well. They love the birthday. They take the seat and they have eggs in the machine. They put them in a piece. So you just slide that right up their back part, huh? Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It kind of bumps up against kind of a root. We'll get a bigger fish. So it's not really attached here at the very bottom. So it's only attached there the root, so you clump that up and oh, I was I was seeing them out here where they're trying to go back into where the water's being dumped or whatever. Uh, anyway it goes goes down the pipe here in the trailer and down a pipe that runs along the river. And then back the pond that the pond is going. I, I was in uh, Hoodsport and they had the trailer there and they were doing the same thing. And they had a clear hose and it was funny because you could see the ones that were getting dumped back in. And they're kind of like, yeah. 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 Ye
much. And this is where they make babies. Oh, wow. Well, those are little incubator trays. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Very well. So those little incubating trays, or those tiny little babies in there right now? No, it's a bone dry right now. They're, that's why you don't hear any water flowing through oh, here. Oh, okay. When, during the winter time when we have every one of these trays will be full of each one of these trays will have about 10,000 eggs in them. Oh. And there's another bank, there's another two banks just like this on the other side. You can see it's water flows down to those, you turn them upside down, water flows down through them and it flows down through all these. And that's basically oh. the eggs. Eggs sit in there until they hatch. And then they hatch in there and then um, as soon as they absorb all their yolk sac, they're put out into the ponds. Awesome. Yep. Interesting. Yep, that's what we have to do to keep the salmon running. Right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, Can I thank ask you what your name is? Huh? Can I ask what your name is? Greg. Greg. Yeah. And are you, what what role do you play here? I'm the manager. You're the manager. Yeah. Right on. So I manage this hatchery and the Goldendale hatchery also. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh -huh. and, yeah. And I had a question. Those fish that are out there, are, you, are they going to be released in this river or do you truck them to other places? Uh, some of them will be trucked to Klickitat River. So there's a portion of them that will be released in, in the Washougal River here. And then there's like two and a half million yearling uh, coho smolts that will be trucked to the Klickitat River in April of next year. So all the coho are released as yearlings. Oh. All our fall Chinook have already been released this year. They're only, re they're released, they're only raised until they're about seven months old. And then they're released into the Washougal River. And so the ones you truck, do, you, do they sit there in big tanks and get used to that water? Do they have to? So no, not unless there's a big temperature difference. It's a, if there's a big temperature difference over like eight degrees Fahrenheit, then sometimes you have to temper the water they're going into so they're not to the shock their system. But since the water is the same temperature, um, they don't have to get used to it. Usually they're, you know, like each tank will put a bag of uh, a salt, rock salt in there, and that just helps, helps them absorb oxygen better and keeps them calm. Oh, okay. kind of a therapeutic thing. Um, up up in uh, Hoodsport area, there's a oh, no. Where were we? Where um, Dungeness? The Dungeness. They bring in a huge tank, and I thought they were saying it was to acclimate the fish to the smell of the water. Oh, because they go straight into the salt water there. They go. Well, they get down there really, really quick. Maybe that's the whole reason. That's okay. that's what they're doing. It's 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 also. They, maybe they have acclimation ponds. Maybe those fish came from somewhere else, and they have to get acclimated to that water. That way, they imprint on that water. Usually. Usually when they go through the smolting phase, right before they want to migrate to salt water, that like six weeks that they start to do that, that's when they really imprint on that water system. Okay. And that way they can find their way back to that water system when they come back from the ocean to spawn. That's what I think it is. And yeah. Wow. yeah. There's awesome. other places that have acclimation ponds. Let's say the fish are being raised somewhere else. So they're going to be released in that river. A lot of times they'll take them over these acclimation ponds so they can imprint on that water. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so we raise about right around six million fish here annually. So we release about uh, two, around, right around two million fall chinook into this river system, and then we also raise um, about three million coho salmon here each year. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. A lot of fish. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. And a lot of them. Do do many of them come back, or where do you? Do you just go down to this river and is that where you pull them back out? The ones that we Yeah, have? we have a fish ladder that's downstream by our adult holding pond. And when the fish return from the ocean, uh, some of them will come all the way back here to our fish ladder, swim up our fish ladder right into our adult holding pond. And then the fall chinook are stocked further downstream. We want to keep the hatchery fish off the spawning grounds. We want to save those spawning grounds just for the, for the wild fish. So there's a what we call a resistance board weir downstream, and that resistance board weir uh, is put in place as a temporary weir that's, that blocks the river off, forces them into a trap. So the fall chinook come back, they hit that resistance board weir, they swim up the tunnel and into the trap, and then each day the fish are sorted, and whatever we need for broodstock purposes are collected and trucked up to the hatchery and we dump them into our adult holding pond and then all the wild fish are passed upstream so they can continue on up to the spawning grounds to spawn. Incredible. Sweet. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of work. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Well, we appreciate it.
Thank you for all that information. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little visit with our local fish hatchery. Hard people, hard at work, bringing salmon to you. Anyways, uh, it's time for us to get on the road, get a little closer, still going north by northwest, I think is what we're doing. So, on where we go, let's rock and roll. <laughs>